Starting off 2026 with a new 3D printer to review. This is a pretty interesting one. This is the SparkX i7 powered by Creality. This seems to be a new sister company to Creality. When it comes to the looks and design, this seems to be a spiritual successor to the Creality High. But in all of their design language talking about this printer, it seems like they're really trying to go for a budget, easy to use, and beginner-friendly printer. And so far in my testing, this has been a very easy to use, very approachable 3D printer. So first off, let's dive right into the specs and some of the features on this 3D printer. First off, the build volume, it's got 260 millimeters in the X and Y axis and 255 millimeters in the Z axis. This vase is slightly smaller than those dimensions to really show you how big you can print on this printer. The entire construction does have a lot of plastic where it is visible, but there's a lot of metal kind of hidden parts holding the structure together, so it is still very stiff. It does come covered with these nice warning labels giving you little tips for using this printer that's really useful, especially for beginners. On the front of the printer is a programmable light bar here. It is really cool that it is programmable and you can have it display several things. You can fully turn it off if you wanted that, but here inside of lighting modes, this first one will give you a progress bar while it's printing. So from a glance across the room, you can see if you've just started the print or it's farther along. You could have it just do a rainbow color. This will cycle the whole thing through different colors. Kind of a rainbow, but the entire thing. Then a few different other lighting modes here. I'm not sure what all of these different colors do. These might just be solid colors down here. So you can either go rainbow or status progress effect. It also gives you a few other notifications. When it's full solid orange, that means you pause the print. And if there's an error with the print, it'll start flashing red, which is great to let you know from across the room that there has been something wrong and you need to come fix it. On here, you can change things like always on mode or even the brightness here if you want it to have it more dim. So depending on where you have your printer, you might want it at a lower brightness. It's really great to be able to adjust all these settings. Now let's go through the process of changing the nozzle on this 3D printer. First off, this front cover just comes straight off. Here we can access this spinny part. So you could replace this with little decorations or logos, whatever you want. The steps are really simple and are listed right here, but there is a QR code also taking you to more instructions. Flip up this lever here, the latch comes off. Remove the silicone sock on the bottom and the nozzle comes straight out. It is magnetically held in place, but this is all you need. So it's fully enclosed on three sides. This is different from Bamboo Lab and a few other companies that have had a similar design where they just have the two pieces of metal pressing up against each other only on one side. This encloses it on three sides. So put it up there, latch the top, click it in place, replace the silicone sock, and that's how easy it is to change the nozzle on this 3D printer. On the back of the hot end, we've got a simple blower fan down here that's blowing on both sides of the part while it's printing. Right here, we can open up the back here. This is the electronics connected to the motor, and there is a fan up top here that'll cool off the motor. And this just pops right in place. And there are a few screws on the left and right if you really wanted to take it apart and needed to replace more important parts there. Around on the back, we've got the power switch, the power in, and the power up to the heated bed. It does have this hard plastic block here, so that way you can, won't bump it up against a wall and damage this cable. It also has more exposed metal over here, reinforcing the structural parts. Down on the bottom of the printer, there's this simple enclosure here. It's got a couple cables and wires hooking things up, so it would be easy to get in here and repair things. And then more reinforced metal here for the important structural bits, while the rest of this up here is plastic. And now on to talk about the CFS light. This is a pretty bare bones box that does exactly what you need. The front is easy to open and close here. It holds four spools like this in the front. You can remove a spool by pressing this button here. We'll release the gears and then pull the filament straight out. It does use RFID tags in here to be able to detect these tags on the Creality spools. And someone always asks the question whenever RFID is involved, you can use any brand of filaments here. It's just when you use Creality's, it only detects Creality RFID tags and will auto know which settings and which color you've loaded into which slots. Inside of the box here is super simple. Up top, there's a single hole to put the filament through. Down on the bottom, there's two dumb rollers here. 
Dumb because there's not any motors controlling these here. They're just plastic rollers with metal bearings that spin when the filament does. In the back, there is a hole back there that you could put some desiccant in. And that's the only way you have to keep the inside of this box at a low humidity. That's really all there is on the inside of this machine. So the top just pops straight up. Three plastic pegs on the front and the back that clip straight in. It's really quite easy to open up here. And now you've got access to the full motors and extruders. These are the real smarts of the entire box here. So here we've got these super cheap extruders in here. The motors are over to the side here, really small motors, just cause it doesn't need to be all that powerful. A few wires connecting up to sensors. And then if you press the button on the front, it just slightly rotates it, pulls the filament away from the gears on the motor, I guess. So it allows the filament to be pulled straight out. This is really easy to access. If you did need to replace anything, if these motors burned out, if any of the gears wore out with a few screws down in there, you could pull out this whole unit and easily replace it. That's awesome for repairability. And around on the back of the CFS, it's extremely white and bare here. All there is is a six pin plug that comes from the printer, plugs directly in there, and now it gets power and data and it's ready to go. During startup, it does these flashing lights and little graphics, and then we make it to the main screen here. You can click this to open up the print files. Going over here to set bed temp or nozzle temp, turning the lights on or off, their little AI help thing, going to directly to the wiki if you use this QR code, maintenance things on here, just the amount of like easy things. They've really made it easy for a beginner to go in here if you have any questions about, say, daily maintenance, motion, you scan this. QR code to go to a guide that'll explain some of the things for you. That's just really cool to see here. Or the cutter or the nozzle wiper. All of these things are really easy to see right here. Down here, we can go to filament. Currently it is all RFID tag spools in there. So I loaded in a non-creality spool in the first nozzle. Here we can edit. This is, there's only options of creality or generic. This is PETG. And I like that they only give you these options here. Here we can select what color we want. I do wish there was labels on these because I'm colorblind and it's really hard to tell on these small screens. This is a PETG, generic PETG and the color. Select OK. And now it's loaded in ready to use. Under print settings, you can also find AI based detection. This has a basic spaghetti detection, presser advanced calibration and print plate detection. Spaghetti detection is one of those features that's really useful when it works correctly, but can be very annoying if it's thinking a print is failing when it's actually not. So far it's worked well, but it will take a lot of testing in the future to see if I actually leave it on. And when it comes to the price on the website, it's currently listed at $340. That is a good bit under the Creality High. The Creality High combo is listed at $400 with the standalone being only $280. And then the Bamboo A1 for comparison is also listed at $300 for the standalone printer and $400 for the combo using the AMS Lite. They currently don't have it listed standalone without the CFS Lite, and they also have listed on the website a CFS Mini, a standalone two spool option. But maybe by the time you're seeing this video, they'll have released prices for these. I will have affiliate links and any coupon codes in the description and pinned comment. Here under settings, it gives you a QR code to connect to the app. Then once you've connected the app, this makes it really easy to control a lot of things on this printer. You can change print speed. You can look at what filaments you have loaded in there or even adjust them. Then you can print from cloud files or local files. So you can go to local and these are all of the files that I've got sliced and already on the printer ready to go. Even going to the USB drive, there's no USB plugged into the printer right now or print from cloud files. So on the app here, I can go to the explore page and here are a lot of print files. Let's do a simple quick print. This is a print in place fidget ring here. And I can say, let's say print. These are pre-sliced files here for this model, or I can say slice, uh, not all of them. Let's just pick one. This takes you into a slicer on the app, which is really cool. It takes you through a little tutorial. 
And wow, this is a slicer directly inside the app here. You can rotate, duplicate, all of these slicer settings that you would normally go through. Parameters, I'm just gonna leave it. Oh, wow. You can go through all of the slicer settings are all right here. And you could save this as a different profile. But I'm just gonna use the default settings, say slice. So now after I've sliced that file, I can go to cloud files, access it right here. This, it is the correct nozzle size. So make sure there's no models, hit confirm. One last selection in the app, we can select what filament we wanna use. Let's use that one. Enable CFS Lite and do the print calibration. Now it runs through calibration and starts printing out the file. And now we can talk about the slicer. Creality Print has updated to Creality Print 7.0, and I have been a big fan of Creality Print for several generations now, and this just adds a lot of really cool features. Over here on the left, we have the release notes. This AI smart analysis, I haven't tested any of that out yet. I probably won't use it. Down here, some of these optimization of layer line speeds. This really could help improve print quality on different speed layers. Ringing artifact optimization, that's another really cool feature. I'm gonna have to test all these out in more detail. But in this review, I was really taking the time to dive into the printer, and so I didn't deep dive into all of these new updates. But this should improve. They have these pictures of before and after of consistent cooling. So these could be really cool features. There's a ton of new infills here, and these are really cool. I don't know exactly they do have a little bit of a description of when you might want to use some of these different things, continuing to upgrade and give new features on these printers. Prime Tower optimization, this is great for being able to put the Prime Tower even closer to the edge of the printer. Print time and usage estimate accuracy, that is a huge upgrade and so useful for every time you use the slicer. Waste flushing optimization, a slight change in the algorithm here can really improve print times. And that's really cool that they're updating older printers by just updating the slicer. On the left, we have a new tab. This is online models. These are all the files uploaded to Creality's Creality Cloud, I think they call it. Basically just STLs. And so you can go through here, browse and find a file you want, Cute Mini Octopus, directly click download and open. You do have to log into their website, but then it would open it here directly on the main page. It's really convenient to have this integrated directly into the slicer here. I've been doing a lot of 3D printing on this machine since I got it, but there's also been several updates of both the machine and the slicer since I got it. This print was done with the most recent firmware and slicer settings, and it also is of the best quality here. I redid all the calibration right before printing it, and I think it turned out really good. The Z seam right here is the one defect I would say on here, and I think that is something that could be tuned out in the future. But the raw print quality here of all the surfaces really looks very good with this filament. This is a handle of a Master Sword by 3D Printing World. For accuracy testing, I always do a lot of printing of multi-board parts. These things are supposed to screw together correctly, and it works on a lot of 3D printers. And everything screws together here correctly and fits on the wall with all of the other prints from other 3D printers. This is a real pass-fail test, and they definitely pass in this category. To test out how well it could print gears, I printed out this mechanical yarn winder. There's a lot of different threading sizes here. It is a bit of a snug fit, but it's not impossible, and it all fits together like it's supposed to. And after a little bit of smoothing, it all spins really well here. The only issue with some of these meshing together were some of the parts that had larger Z seams like this, but a little bit of sanding knocked that down, and that is something that really should be fixed in the slicer instead of having to sand things down. This was a giant vase mode print to show off the true size of this print bed. This is about the width and the height of the, what can be printed on this printer. Overall, it is a really large printer. This was calibrated for a different table, and then I moved it to a different place and ran this without properly rerunning that calibration. So it doesn't actually use the correct values and you do get ghosting again. But when you rerun the calibration like it's supposed to, you again get beautiful surface quality. Now we do need to talk about comparisons between this and the competition. Competition being the Creality High and the Bamboo A1. This has a similar level to plastic in the build as the Bamboo A1, and the, and the Creality High does have a lot more metal involved, but the prints all turn out great, and I don't think it's going to be a durability issue. 
I think the Creality High was just kind of overbuilt. A lot of the base part being solid metal makes it a solid printer, but you don't need metal in all these places. There's metal where it needs to be and plastic where it's fine to be plastic. The downside here, you can only connect four spools with a CFS light. That is similar to the Bamboo A1, but also I think most people are just gonna use one CFS anyway. So it's probably not a downside for most people. Both of those printers do work great, but I think they all fall into the category of printing really well at a similar build volume, but this is cheaper. So me personally, if I was shopping for all of these, I would just go for the cheaper one. Unless you wanted to buy into the Bamboo Lab ecosystem, the Bamboo A1 or A1 Mini are both really great options and I use my A1 Mini a ton. So overall, that just about wraps it up. If there's any more questions you have about this printer or anything I forgot to cover, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to help you out. And again, if you are thinking about picking up this printer, there will be some affiliate links in the description down below. Those do help the channel out at no additional cost to yourself. Now go out there and create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.